Humpback whales are famous for their songs. It was first recorded in the 1960s. We know that male humpback whales are the only ones that sing, so we kind of think it's got this reproductive function um, for courtship and attracting females. The song was only initially recorded in the breeding season, but now song has been recorded all over, so on the feeding grounds and throughout the migratory corridor. So now we're thinking maybe song actually has this multi-functional purpose, maybe for keeping in contact throughout migration or male cohesion, but we don't actually know why they are singing. Whale song is this highly repetitive and rhythmical series of vocalisations. So they're formed of units and then a series of units will form a phrase and then there'll be a bunch of phrases that make up a theme and a few different themes that make up a song. So it's highly repetitive, structured, rhythmical and predictable. And this is produced only by the males. And then all females, males and juveniles will produce social calls and feeding calls. They give me some of the units from song, but they're unstructured and kind of random, where song is very predictable in its structure. So my project is mainly focusing on the waters around Northern Ireland and Western Scotland. We once thought humpback whales were kind of this rare vagrant to our waters, but now maybe they're actually the seasonal visitor, which would influence how we look at them in terms of policy and management, so it's really important. So I'm looking at using passive acoustic monitoring to see when and where we're getting humpback whales in these waters. So we have this background of historical over-exploitation and also humpback whales today face many different threats from plastic pollution, ship strike, underwater noise and entanglement. So humpback whales are also highly protected by different levels of legislation. So we do have a legal obligation to report on their status and to ensure they're protected. So we need to know where they are first. <laughs> so we have sound traps, so they're quite small devices. I'm using 20 different sites, so there's a massive spatial scale. It hasn't been done in this area yet. It allows for a massive temporal coverage because we can leave these devices out for five years. So we've got this massive data set and then we'll download the data off that and we use special software to look at the spectrograms, which is a visualisation of the sounds. So when I get the spectrograms through, I check every hour and see if I'm getting humpback whale song. And then we kind of group this into detection positive hours per day. And this allows us to look at deal patterns and seasonal patterns across the years. So from the spectrograms, you're able to say whether it's a humpback whale based on the patterns of the song. We do get other species and then we get dolphins and porpoises and things, but you use, you use sight and you, you'll listen to it as well just to confirm that, that it is a humpback whale. So humpback whales were decimated by commercial whaling in the North Atlantic until the 80s. Their estimated numbers were down by like 90, 95%. But since the moratorium of whaling came into place that they are recovering, so in the North Atlantic, we've got the West Indies and Caribbean population, which are doing quite well. And we also have the Cape Verde Island population, which are still classed as endangered. And we are getting animals from both of these populations in our waters. So I just really encourage people to get involved, report any sightings you have of humpback whales or any other cetacean species. It's really useful information and will really help to build towards properly conserving and protecting these species.